Today I'm going to dissect my Kermit plush and turn it into a puppet. <laughs> Yay! To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue, all of the dolls will make it shake. If you want to be in the know and to play like a pro, subscribe to Kutinger Puppets. Adam Krutinger here, and I'm sure a lot of people out there would love to have their own Kermit puppet. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that making a puppet is not as easy as it looks. But today, to make things a little easier, rather than starting from scratch, we're gonna use a stuffed Kermit. Hi ho there! Wait, you're gonna what? That's right. Good grief! Now there's many different Kermit plush dolls that have been made over the years. From the pictures online, this one looked like it would be about the right size, though it might be a little bit small for my hand, I think it might still work. The tag says that this one was made from Eden Toys, and I just looked it up and it looked like it's from the early 90s. And I'm sure these techniques would work with almost any Kermit plush that you can find. Now, I always recommend to make your own puppet from scratch, it's much easier than altering existing pieces. A lot of times converting a stuffed animal into a puppet sounds a lot easier easier, but it never turns out to be as nice of quality of a puppet, and you tend to run into a bunch of unexpected headaches. I'm sure we're going to run into a couple today too. Anyway, let's get started. Now the first thing we have to do before we dissect this frog is to take off this vest. It's only held in with a couple stitches, so I'm just going to use a seam ripper to take those out. And this is actually a nice little vest, so I might actually save this so I can use it on a future puppet. And we'll do the same with the bow tie can see there, there's just some little threads there. I'm gonna pull out. Okay, now we're ready to dissect this frog. First thing I wanna do is make an entrance hole into the bottom of the plush. Now this is one of the problems that you get when you are cutting apart an existing stuffed animal, is when you cut across one of these seams here that are stitched up, it could make this whole puppet unravel. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do after I make a cut through one of these stitches is put a little bit of glue there so it doesn't keep unraveling. So let me cut in that entrance hole now. Let's find out what is inside Kermit the Frog. All right, whew, look at that. Ugh, rough day, huh, buddy? Pull all these guts out. So now look at that. Some of the stuffing is from inside the legs. I'm gonna leave some of that stuffing in there. Now, I can also see that there are some stitches in the corner of the mouth. That's what keeps it from staying open all the way while the head is stuffed. So let me get that stitch out of here. Be careful not to rip the fabric. Look at that, he is deflated. <laughs> this poor Kermit is like a deflated balloon now. Oh my gosh. Let me turn him inside out just to see what we're working with now. There is this plastic mouth plate thing that's also part of what keeps his mouth open. And looking under this, it looks like there's a nice fake leather here that will act as a really good mouth plate. So I don't think we need this plastic at all. So let me just carefully take these seams out of the plastic. Now this little piece of plastic might make a good mouth plate for a future puppet. Click right here if you wanna see how to make a simple puppet that you can use this mouth plate for. Now if you see these little pegs here that are sticking out, that's on the back of the eyes. These little posts are what hold the stuffed animal eyes in and keep them from falling out. It's a safety protection thing for a choking hazard. The problem with this for a puppet though, is that it's really uncomfortable on the back of your hand. You're not gonna want these pegs uh, poking into the top of your wrist. Not only is it uncomfortable, but also it'll make the eyes move in unpredictable ways that will not look realistic. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually cut these pegs off and then re-glue the eyes on at the end. Unfortunately, there's no great way to get these off. And don't forget to wear eye protection when doing this. All right, now that we have the eyes off, what I have to do is cut these little pegs off too. All right, that's much better. But there's one little problem. When I go to glue these onto the Kermit head, because there's some hollow spots, there's not a lot of surface area for the glue. So I'm gonna fill those sections right now. I typically probably use like an epoxy resin to fill that in, but today I'm just gonna use hot glue. 
Okay, and we'll let those sit for a little bit. All right, now they're filled in. I'm just gonna sand them a little bit flatter. Then we'll be able to move on. All right, that's perfect now. Now, before we work on the body, let me turn this back inside out and see if my hand even fits inside of it. Huh, that's actually not too bad. My hand fits in it. It is a little bit snug, but it does fill out the head kind of nicely. Good grief. It's definitely starting to look like a real Muppet. Speaking of the Muppet, my good friend and co-host from the podcast, Cameron Garrity, just started a new series that he calls The Muppet Know. In this mini series that has episodes that are only one minute long, Cameron shares a lot of fun facts about the Muppets and a lot of unknown Muppet history. Here's a short one. It's time once again for The Muppet Know, where I tell you about some of my favorite parts of Muppet history. I want to talk about one of my favorite puppetry moments from The Muppets Most Wanted. This is the movie where Kermit gets sent off to a gulag in Russia, where the recent Recent Muppet movies have been rightly criticized for their over-reliance on blue and green screen techniques. Uh, if you know, you know. This moment where Kermit gets sent to the prison is so brilliant in its simplicity I had to give it its own video. Kermit gets hoisted by a whole gang of prisoners and you see his entire body flailing above the crowd. But Eagle Eye fans will notice that one of those prisoners is actually Steve Whitmire. So the puppeteer of Kermit, whose primary job is not to be seen by camera, is literally standing there hiding in plain sight. He's right there. You can see him more easily when they cut to the wide. Again, they could have relied on a digital solution, but sometimes the best idea is the easiest one. I'll see you next time on The Muppet. If you enjoyed that, Cam has tons of episodes on his TikTok and Instagram. Be sure to like and follow for more. Anyway, back to our Kermit, because he looks pretty creepy without the eyes. <laughs> now I'm gonna save attaching the eyes till the end, but one thing I don't like about this puppet is this floppy body here. And looking at this closely, because of the scale of this puppet, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get foam in there with my arm. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is make a small fabric tube that goes from the top of the neck to the bottom here, and then before I stitch it in, I'm gonna put some of the stuffing back to fill out the body. Let's see if it works. First thing I'm gonna do is measure his neck hole. So it's about nine inches at the neck, about 13 inches at the base. I'm gonna use this old t-shirt fabric for today. So I double this fabric in half, so I have to cut those numbers in half. So for the 13, instead of 13, I'm gonna use seven and a half. So let me go from here to about seven and a half. I'm also gonna mark halfway between that. I'm gonna go seven inches up, seven inches up, 4.5. There we go, that's all stitched up. Now let's stitch it into our puppet. First thing I'm gonna do is pin it in. I'm pinning the top of this to the neck hole. Now I'm just going to stitch that in. Okay, so the neck is all stitched in. Now let's stitch it to the bottom. You can see the seam is coming apart where it was stitched before. Uh, I'm just going to stitch that closed before I do the rest of the puppet. Now before I do my last couple stitches to close this up, I wanna put some stuffing into the body. Now you don't wanna put the stuffing into the middle of the puppet, you wanna put it between the lining and the skin of the puppet. And you're definitely not gonna to wanna to put all the stuffing back in. It would be way too bloated if you did that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let me stitch up this last piece. There we go, he's filled out pretty nicely. It's a little tough to make sure you kind of work that stuffing all the way around. So I've kind of had to pull at it and tug in a couple spots, but I think that looks much better. Now before we stick his eyes on, why don't we give him some fingers too? If you look here, his hand is more like a paddle. What I want to do is separate these fingers. To do that, I'm just going to use scissors. Now you could stitch between all these fingers, but that would take a long time and it might not even look that good. Today, I'm just gonna use some hot glue. Click right here if you wanna learn how to make arm rods for your puppet too. These will allow me to use this plush like a real puppet. Now you could use hot glue to attach the eyes, but today I'm gonna use contact cement. I 
Oh, Kermit the Frog oh, here. Kermit. Get over here, frog. Mm. Good grief. Sorry for those cringy impressions, but if you really would like a Kermit the Frog puppet and you're intimidated by doing a real puppet build, this is actually a fine option. Now it's definitely far from perfect. At least with this plush that I'm using, it's a little bit on the small side, but it definitely kind of works out. Some of the proportions are off a little bit, but without a doubt, given I was able to get this on eBay for $30 and really only did about an hour worth of alterations, it turned out pretty good. But a few weeks ago, I posted a video on how to make a custom frog puppet. That build is a little bit more than a weekend project, but you will end up with a perfect professional puppet. I even have a pattern for it on my website. There's links to that down below. If you enjoyed this build, definitely consider subscribing. Over the last couple years, I have made tons of videos on how to make puppets, time-lapse videos of really cool characters like Baby Yoda and Figment, and we even have a podcast called Puppeteers where we've even interviewed a ton of puppeteers who perform with the Muppets. Now this technically is not a replica puppet, but I have made a bunch of replicas of Muppets in the past. Here's a few of the photos. And you might even find some videos of these if you dig deep enough into my YouTube channel. These are really old photos and videos. You can probably tell from my hair. And maybe if this video gets enough likes, I'll do an updated replica build. Like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to check out the merch store and I'll see you next time.